Welcome to the hottest real estate topics on the planet, keeping you up to date with all the creative ways to buy and sell real estate without bank qualifying, so anyone can build real income starting today. Here is another great show with Dealmaker Bill and Pete the Rookie. All right, another episode of Flipping Houses for Rookies. Here we are, Peter. Peter, Peter. Good morning, Here Bill. we are. Bill, I think you're awake. Yeah. Episode number 245. 245. Wow. Whoa. With like 1.25 million downloads and counting, huh? You know, that's a, that's a lot of numbers there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So today's episode name is How to Mine Hot Pockets, Peter. Hot Pockets. You're not of creative real estate. And you're not talking about the, uh, the breakfast treat, are you? No. How to mine hot pockets of creative real estate gold with extraordinary profitable results. Ooh. Extraordinary. Yeah. Not ordinary. Profitable results. Extraordinary. With, I'm going to read the description. With the advent of cell phones in today's world, it is way too easy to have another give you an address. You plug it into your phone and have GPS give you exact directions to hit the required location. Right? True that. What if I told you today we can do the same with finding hot pockets of creative real estate deals with extraordinary profits. Would you believe me? Or would you be thinking the way our current market with houses selling over market value makes it extremely impossible to not only find the rainbow, but even more impossible to find the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> I know many have told me this over and over and over again, except I have found my personal business and wealth has expanded while all those other folks are complaining, which makes me think of this one point, Peter. Your behavior of doing a deal is much more important than the actual behavior of the deal. Mm, wow, mm. Well, wait a minute. There's one different word in that sense, the behavior of doing the deal. Your behavior, yeah. let me see here, your behavior of doing a deal is much more important than the actual behavior of the deal. So there's some, there's something in the doing word there. So doing. Yeah. yeah, all right. I'll pay attention. Think, ab think about that for a moment. In today's podcast, we're going to go over simple concepts that will act just like that GPS on your phone. So you can get to exactly where you want and need to be financially and mentally. But beware, Peter. Beware. You could have some major shifts in your thinking after today. <laughs> Man, that's some really strong words, Mr. Hawthorne. I could deliver. Don't worry about it. Underestimate me, please, Peter. I work better that way. Well, you know what? As the rookie, and you're sometimes partner because you got your own deals. I get some of mine, but we do a lot of things together. I've been talking to you a lot. Folks, he's not just talking. He's got deals going. Yeah, I mean, we're closing tomorrow on something. You got things you've just bought. Yeah, it's a, you know, it's you've got more going on now than in a normal market. Yeah, yeah. All right, I agreed. Mm. So let's do some of the housekeeping first. So first of all, thank you everyone for being here and supporting Peter and I and flipping houses for rookies. Uh, if you go into the description of wherever you found us, whether it be on Flakebook or ZooTube, or whether it's uh on our podcast, you know, Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes, whichever one you use for a podcast uh, uh, platform. 
in the description there's a link and that link has uh, 25 or 26 free things on there you know there's scripts and forms and videos and I have to tell you that I'm being Bill the marketer that I know how to be and if you haven't been there recently I've been changing that page I've been adding and subtracting things so if you haven't been there recently uh, because you think you've seen it all you should go visit it again because uh, it's different okay also like I said, if you go on to uh, Facebook, as I call it, Flakebook, uh, which, by the way, I want to give that name most commonly used by me to uh, my dear friend and awesome copywriter and email teacher, Ben Zettel. That's where I got that from. Uh, so give him credit for that. Uh, you should go check him out if you would like to learn how to write copy, uh, you know, and uh, get, you know, enhance your business with some good marketing tips. Then Ben Settle, S-E-T-T-L-E is a uh, is a great place to go uh, good morning Topher then uh, so you can go on Facebook or Flakebook as I call type in flipping houses for rookies and you could uh, watch us live we stream this thing uh, just like we are right now somewhere around 9 30 a.m. Um, so we when we're recording the podcast itself uh, we stream it on Facebook and also YouTube so you can go on either one of those platforms while we're recording, which is about, like I said, 9.30, Thursday morning, a.m. and uh, Eastern Standard Time. And you could uh, type in, you know, comments or whatever because they're right in front of me and we can answer <coughs> questions uh, as long as they are per pertinent to the podcast that we're working on. Um, if you have other questions, then you'll need to go to FlippingHousesForRookies.com. Top right-hand side of the webpage is a support ticket link just go in there i answer all those support tickets i don't have uh, virtual assistants or anybody do that uh, you guys are way too important to me your support means a lot to me as well as peter and i do not want to put you in the hands of a five dollar philippine uh five dollar an hour philippine virtual assistant uh you're you're much much more important to me than that or any so or any that. country not just philippines just any five dollar yeah, person yeah. anywhere we love I filipinos i got them <laughs> yeah, we got them in Ecuador too, so which are awesome people. All right, so let's uh, get back to business here now that we got the housekeeping done. Yep. So let's start off with the profound statement I made in today's podcast description. Your behavior of doing the deal is much more important than the behavior of the deal. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you? Hmm. Deals are deals, Pete. Yeah. Good or bad, deals are deals. Mm. That is usually in control of what the seller considers valuable to them. Mm. Yep. Right. Yep. And if you and if you're and, and if you can confidently deliver that value to them, well, then the deal becomes real. But at the end of the day, you're working off of the the seller's reality of what they consider valuable okay yeah then yeah however and the profound point that i want to make here without turning the whole podcast into this one statement because i can do that how do you the listener right now how do you react to the ups and downs are you enthusiastic or cheerful or conservative when you lose deals? I'm sorry. Are you conservative, too conservative, and lose deals is what I'm trying to say. Mm. You know, because you overdo your numbers. How many times I have coaching clients? Well, I think the repairs are, you know, $85 a square foot. Well, you're going to knock yourself out of the park. You're going to be way too conservative. Yep. Do you have mild interest in doing the deal? Maybe you're just content in life and you're just looking for those those really special fall in your lap. Like, yeah, I'll do that. I, I'd be stupid not to do that. Yeah, the, easy, the easy ones. Yeah, you're too content in your life. <clears throat> Maybe you're disinterested. I know I ran into this with you a little bit. You're disinterested in the deals, but you're interested in the money. You know, like I put an email out the other day, which did not get as much of a response as I thought. 
and, and I thought it was pretty clever on words myself personally, but it doesn't matter what I think. It matters what my, 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 my crowd thinks, my congregation That's thinks. That's right. But do you want to go to heaven, but you don't want to die? <laughs> you know? I mean, it's a play on words, and I know, you know I'm, I'm a very religious person, so that doesn't, it's not an insult on heaven. But the point is, is are, are you disinterested in what it takes to do this business? Are you just, are you just, do you just want the money? Mm-hmm. Right? Are you bored about it all? I know I get that yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> I saw, Bill, we were in the lawyer's office the other day, folks. Uh, we just having to bump into each other, doing some paperwork with the lawyer and all that. And Bill's sitting in the other room. He's leaning back, like, you know, he's ready to light up a cigar and take a nap. He's so relaxed with the lawyer stuff. I'm getting kind of used to it, too, but he's just so bored sometimes. But It's a valuable point, Peter. I'm going to have to have a talk with him. Then. We're, we're going to have to we're gonna have to turn these sessions into me smoking a cigar. I mean, in the last, yeah. I think in the last eight or ten days, I've been with him every single day. Where's the patio there? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> What I found out the other day is the guy, the other lawyer that's there is the guy that owns the building because I was talking about, he was asking me if I wanted to rent the room, yeah. which is something I was thinking about. Anyways, mm-hmm. so are you bored about it all? How about this? Do you have antagonism Antagonism? or are you hostile about it? Especially when you're talking to your money guys. Oh, the money guys. Yeah, are you pissed off because they have money and you don't? Oh. Are you antagonistic or hostile about it? Well, Bill, I've heard some of the uh, the students, when they make phone calls or you hear some recordings and they're talking to a seller, they sound like they're pissed off. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, the seller, you're talking about the money guys. I hadn't thought of that, but I, I haven't heard that one. But I, I've heard them with sellers. Like, yeah. I mean, is that how you talk to, like, the guy at the gas station, you know, the, the yeah. laundromat, the girl at the grocery store? Like, rah, 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 rah. geez, yeah. like, be not... They're not even going to like you just when you open your mouth. Where do you think that's going to go? Right. Be nice. Exactly. Jeez. Don't Which get brings us to Jeez. the next one. Are you angry? Because <laughs> antagonism and angry is two different things, right? In my definition of angry out of this whole entire one, this is the one I see the most. Here's my definition of angry, Peter. Yeah. You, 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 you have a threat of loss and you're fighting for it. That's anger. You have a threat of loss, and you're fighting for it. You're oh, angry. Yeah. You think you're, you're going to lose something. You think you're going to lose it, and yeah. you're fighting for it, and you're angry. You know. Well, you know what's weird? I've I've actually done talks on emotions, like you know, semi-professional, but I've done talks on it. And you would think that a situation would elicit the same response of emotion from no. everybody. Not at all. Not like one situation, <clears throat> one guy, I had a friend, he was a class president. And no matter what happened, he was just like, oh, it's fine. He was just always up there, you know. No wonder he was class president. I know yeah. somebody, the least little thing goes wrong, crash, like, ah, take it easy. Right. So your right. response is your response. It doesn't that's have to point. be that. But you think it does. Oh, he said that's so he made me mad. Why'd you get mad? Why don't you just let him yeah. say it, walk away, and go, eh. Yep. It's your response. It can change. I'm not saying you flip the switch, but don't think you're stuck with it because you're not. You have something. Right. You can change that. And that's important in life and in this business. If you have a crappy attitude, you need to figure out how to move that. Exactly. So do you hate your seller and others in the deal? I mean, I, 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 I see this happen. I see this happen a lot. Hate the seller? I mean, hate the seller? Yeah, because they, they, well, I have a deal that we just closed yesterday that the seller, the seller went behind my back and did all kinds of scrupulous stuff and tried to sell to somebody else because, you know, covertly, right? I could easily hate her. But if I did, she called us at five. She called us on Friday morning and said she wanted she wanted us in the house that day. At 5.30 that night, we wrote a purchase and sales contract. 5.30 p.m. on a Friday night. Yeah. We closed at 3 o'clock on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. If I if I hated her for what she did to me, which I could have easily done, I wouldn't have made the deal. Right. Okay? Yeah. Perhaps you're resentful about the deal. Or you're, uh, here's what else what happens. You're resentful about your spouse or somebody that's busting your chops because you're spending all this money and you're not making any money. So now that resentment leaks through the deal and neediness. 
Mm. Right? Because yeah. you're resentful you haven't made a deal yet. And you're trying to prove it to somebody else instead of just doing what's right for the deal. Yeah. Right? Yep. How, how about having no sympathy? <laughs> I can do that easily. <laughs> that, oh, that's one of my favorite. <laughs> Unexpressed resentment. Mm. Those are a lot of your suspects. Unexpressed resentment. So they're resenting you because you're, they think that you're trying to make money off of their dough. A lot of people will tell you, so you're trying to make money off of my asset? They don't get it. Unexpressed resentment, right? Yeah. Or, or how about being passive aggressive? Huh, yeah, well, we could talk about that for four shows, passive aggressive. Being covert? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How about anxious? Fearful? Maybe you feel there's no hope or total terror. Possibly numb. Some people are just numb. <laughs> Right? Mm -hmm. Or just treat the deal like it's dead. Oof. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. no, that well, what do you mean, I'll treat it like it's dead? Well, I've seen, we've had situations where now it's not going to happen. You go, wait a minute. And just come up with some bright idea how you can bring it back to life. You think, no, it's over. He's not going to do it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Huh? That's a great example, but how about foreclosure? Oh, there's nothing I could do about it. They're in total apathy, and then it's just like the deal is dead. There's nothing they can do anyway, so why bother to try? Yeah. It's just dead. Yeah. And they're just staying there as long as they can until somebody physically comes and moves them out of the house. Mm -hmm. right? Head in the sand type scenario. Yep. See, see, Peter, your behavior or attitude, as I just stated, has everything to do with how the deal turns out. Like I always say, where your attention flows, energies go, results show. So if you're angry and you have attention on being angry, what kind of energy are you going to feed into that anger? Mm -hmm. You're going to build that anger. It's going to go from being an anthill to a mountain. Yeah. Because your mind is just going to keep pouring energy into it. And you're going to get angrier and angrier and angrier. And the result that you're going to have is a blow up. Ah! Right? Yeah. It's real easy if the seller or anybody is angry to just get angry back. It's so easy to just throw back the same emotion or attitude that you get huh? right back in somebody's face. But that's not a good idea. So there's another little jewel I'd like to give to you mm -hmm. before I read this next sentence. Mm-hmm. My definition of anxious or anxiety. Yeah. Because a lot of people have anxiety. Mm -hmm. So here is what anxiety is in my mind. Mm -hmm. Anxiety is fear of not knowing what's going to happen in the future. Unknown future events. Unknownness. Mm -hmm. Which is why my statement on, to all my, on, on every deal to all my clients is just do your next step. If you get, if you, if you become, if you're in control of the next step and you feel good about it, mm -hmm. then the anxiety will go away because yep. you know what the next portion of. So anxiety is the fear of not knowing what's going to happen in the future. Yep. But if you do your next step and you know what's going to happen, the anxiety will go away. Yeah. Right. So if, if, if you're, if you're always anxious, then what you'll get is more anxiety. Yeah. Right? Worry you have about to change it. that pattern. Worry about it's not going to fix it. Right. That next step. You know, well, you get this feeling like you're kind of helpless and not in control and you can't, you can't be sure what's going to happen. But right. that might be five, six steps up, right? The, the, and how's it going to end up? Well... It might, you might be out of sequence. You might be at step three and, and thinking about step eight. Well, yeah. the reason why you're anxious is because what happens between step three and step eight and the amount of data and the amount of uh, information that you can gather to make the decision at step eight will help you make the decision at step eight. Yeah. But if you're missing, I do that with my oldest daughter, Jessie. You know, she's going blah, 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 blah. I'm like, Jess, you don't have enough data. You need to slow down. You, the next step you need to do is get this information and then get that information. And then 
once you get enough information, you'll be able to not be anxious and you'll be able to make a conscious decision and not worry about your decision because you feel like you have, you've extrapolated or pulled out enough information mm -hmm. so you can make the decision, right? Yep. So wouldn't it make sense to remove as many of these obstacles as possible so you don't get driven into an emotional, into an emotion that holds you against the deal through your own doing? Mm. Your own worst right? enemy, huh? Yourself. So another saying that I have, and, and again, this is all just kind of profound stuff. Another saying that I have is uh, frustration is a function of expectation. So if you're frustrated, look at your expectations. What are you expecting? Maybe you were over expecting. Like, like I expect my wife to pay a doctor bill that's $100,000. And I'm frustrated when she's not paying that bill. That's probably a bad example. Uh, I expect my wife to pay for dinner and she never pays for dinner. Right. Yeah. So, so if she's, you know, and I've talked to her about it and blah, 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 blah. And, and I can't get it to change. So if I, if I, if I don't want to be frustrated, then I just need to change my expectations. I need to change me, you know, my mind on expecting her to pay for dinner. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's a bad example, but I think no, it's, no, it's true though. You, you know, we keep hoping things will happen the way we want. That's nice. Try to do that. But if you're expecting something to happen that may not, you're just going to frustrate yourself. You have to just... Right. How many students call me or text me or email me, my coaching clients, and say, I got this deal, and they're counting their thirty or $40,000 before they even close the seller on doing the deal? All they've of, already, they've all already of them? Collected, yeah, they've already collected the money, and they're already spending it, telling me what they're going to do with it Spend before they it. even close the seller. They're already okay. skiing in and, Colorado. Exactly. So what I'm talking about here is how you hunt for deals. So many, and I think it's about 90% of all real estate investors make this mistake. They think that they are in the business of structuring and making deals for profit. Mm. That's what they think. No, they aren't. Unless you want to do things the hard way, like go on the MLS and try to buy a flip, raise the money, do the renovations and sell it. That's one of the hardest things you can do, right? Yeah. Wouldn't it make sense or make more sense if we were in the business of finding sellers who are ready to sell or have sold something before, even... <clears throat> Complement what the seller wants. And when giving your offers, consider them valuable. So if you if you talk to somebody, why not talk to somebody that is willing to hear about a creator real estate deal? Mm. And so when you call them, they find your offer valuable. The fact that they don't have to be a landlord might be one of them. Or the fact that, you know, you can rent from them for a year or two and then buy. That might be valuable to them. Right. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So why not start in that pool instead of like the for sale by owner that's looking for two hundred thousand dollars and you say, Well, I'll give you fifteen hundred a month. He's like, Why would I do that? The market's hot, I can get twenty grand over. Right? Yeah, true. Your success depends upon the value the seller places upon what you can do for them. Your success depends upon the value the seller places upon what you can do for them. That's it. Okay? Mm -hmm. The biggest mistake I see when teaching or coaching is the real estate investor uses their own value or what they think the seller wants to determine the best offer for the seller. Mm -hmm. And they push it hard. Yeah. This is how you get ghosted. Here's where, here's where the... Passive aggressiveness and unexpressed resentment comes from. Yep. Possibly hate because they're like, they don't want that, right? So the rule missed a lot is find out what people want and then help them get it. So find out what your seller wants and then help them get it. Right, but I think people make the mistakes. I know I have. You talk to somebody for five minutes and you think you know what it is. Yeah. And I remember reading 
I can't remember the book now, but he was talking about going seven levels deep. Yeah. Right. Remember that one? Seven levels deep to find out what it really is. Like you ask somebody, what do you want to do? Oh, I want to lose weight. Okay. Well, why do you want to lose weight? Well, so I, 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 so I look better. Like, well, why do you want to do that? Well, I want to feel better too. Well, why is that? Well, then I'll feel better about myself. Why? Well, then maybe I can get a, a relationship going. Oh, why didn't you say that originally? Yeah. So it can take, yeah, we get a little impatient. We, cause I've done it like, oh, I, I know what he wants. He wants this, that, and the other. And then it wasn't right. It just too impatient, not listening, not caring enough about the other guy. And you don't, you don't really get the right thing. That's right. Yeah. All right. So let me ask you and the listeners this. What do you think would be easier for you to do? One, help the seller get what they want. Or two, try to change or overcome their intended motivation with some magical sentence or some special deal structure. <laughs> I refuse to answer on the basis it may incriminate me. <laughs> you get what I'm saying here? Yeah. So the next rule, okay? Yeah. And, begin, and beginning and the very beginning of mining hot pockets of gold with extraordinary profit results is motivation. Okay. Yeah. So once you figure out motivation is the only, uh, let me give you a two again. Once you figure out motivation is in only a few types of buckets, in other words, common amongst many, hmm. Right. So so it's just like we talk about objection, stalls and resistance when we're talking to people. What are their mm -hmm. objections? What are their stalls? What are their resistance? Yeah. And we find that there's 13 to 18 of them that are common amongst all sellers. So, A, once you list those 13 to 18, you, the stress goes away because you're like, oh, there's only 13 or 15 of them. Mm -hmm. Then once you know how to handle them, it, it takes less stress out. Right. So when somebody says. Oh, uh, I, I don't want the mortgage to stay in my name while the deed's in your name. You know how to handle that. Yeah. Right? So what I'm saying is the same thing here, right? Is once you figure out motivation is, is, is in only a few types of buckets, you know, 12 or 13 or 15 types of motivations, it'll put your mind at ease because you're not thinking that, um, you're not thinking that, uh, there's a 10 million of them and I got to learn them all. No, there's only, they're, yeah. they're common. Yeah. Right. You can start to appeal to now you can start to appeal to the correct sellers who will give you less resistance when making creative offers. Right. Mm -hmm. So it starts, it starts off with the list. So just, just to be extremely clear before I move on and give you life examples of how to do this, Finding a congregation of sellers whom would want to hear and appreciate creative real estate offers is the main skill you should acquire to be successful. That bears repeating, Mr. Hawthorne. Yeah, because so many people come into my planet, Bill's planet, and they want to learn about the deal structuring and all the fancy math and all the fancy words that I use. And they're like trying to memorize everything and they want to be like me. I'm like, I don't know. God knows why anybody would want to be like me. It's not easy. Right. Mm -hmm. When really, really, they don't need to do any of that. What they need to do is be is is is. Uh, really concentrate on finding sellers that would want to hear and appreciate their creative real estate offers. Mm -hmm. That's the skill you should have is finding those sellers. Yep. Because once you find a motivated seller, they don't give a crap about your education or what you're going to, all they want to know is you're going to help them. They finally found somebody in the sea of life that is willing to help them for real. Yep. Because those motivated sellers will allow you to be an amateur, make mistakes, even look stupid, which is one of the biggest reasons why students spend so much money on learning, because they don't want to look stupid. Well, mm -hmm. get over it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I look stupid all the time. 
<laughs> no, I said that to you yesterday. I had to talk to some lawyer about this house, this abandoned house I've been looking for and looking after. And it's like, so, so, and I don't talk to lawyers a lot. And this is somebody I don't know at all. And I asked, so if I do this, this, and that, would that make sense? I don't want to look stupid, which was not the, I don't really care if, if I, if I look stupid, I don't want to look stupid. So he doesn't work with me mostly. Like I, this guy doesn't know what he's doing and, and dismiss me. That's the real reason that I don't want to look stupid. I don't about anybody else. It's not a personal thing. I just don't want to look like, ah, he doesn't know what he's doing. Don't hire him. You know, answer the questions wrong, fail the job interview and you lose. Um, so, but you, you're right. If, because I did it, you find the guy who has a problem, you find the answer. Like my first deal, I don't know what I was doing. I said everything half backwards, but they're so happy to find someone willing to help them. It's like, that's it. You're the guy. <laughs> if it's you or nobody in a way, you know? So even if you're not uh, they'll, perfect. They'll, they'll let you be an amateur. Yeah. They'll let you make mistakes. Yeah. They'll, even, they'll even tolerate you looking stupid, but they'll still do the deal. Yep. Hey, Peter, Peter, I went to the bank two days ago, uh -huh. and I deposited a pretty big check. Yeah. And I want to tell you about my experience at the bank. Yes. They know me there, so they're like, hey, Bill, how are you today? I'm pretty good. Geez, it's kind of nice outside. Are you going to be able to get outside and get some sun? She says, yeah, I hope so. Probably at lunchtime. Mm. I'm like, that's pretty cool. I said, you guys got to be a little bit nervous about the 19th, March 19th, Connecticut's going to lift all the COVID restrictions. And that means you guys are going to be back to normal, right? So you're probably going to be like a little bit nervous about that, right? She goes, yeah, they got a lot of good stuff going on. So I don't think it's going to be any problem. Do you want me to put the the... Do you want me to put the balance of your account on the deposit slip? I'm like, no, I'm online. I can see that anytime I want. All right, here you go, Bill. Have a good day. Thanks so much. Okay. Yeah. She didn't say to me, where did you get this money? <laughs> she didn't say to me, did, did, you, did you look stupid while you were collecting this money? <laughs> did your seller say something to you hurt your feelings? She didn't say any of that. The money has no conscience. Mm. She didn't ask me if I did a good job with my seller. She didn't say to me, are you a professional? Bill, I know you've done hundreds of deals. How did you handle that seller to make this big deposit? She didn't ask me that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Well, people don't care about a lot of stuff. They care about what they care about. That's the lady at the bank. That's the seller. To the, all they to care. The, That's all to they the care about. Back up, to back up the podcast, it's the value they think you're giving them. And that's different for everybody. Somebody might value the fact that, that you're paying next month's mortgage payment. They don't have to pay it. Yep. Some people might value, uh, I just closed on a house, uh, you know, two days ago, and and and... and she needed she needed a hundred grand to go like pay off debt, and her value was that I could I could write a purchase and sales contract at five thirty on a Friday night, and close on a Tuesday night, and she apologized to us three times. Oh really? Yeah, because we gave her that offer five weeks ago, and I and we point and she said that she had somebody else she was going to talk to. She was very sl very sly, very sly. She was Asian, very sly, right? And, and, and I told Sean that, you know, hey, she's got another, she's got, she's got plan B. You have to ask, what is plan B? If you don't like my offer, what is plan B? Mm. And plan B is going to look more valuable to them than plan A, which is us. So she said she had somebody else she was going to show it to. I have a friend that's in the business, blah, blah, blah. Well, on Friday night, I make her confess. Because I'm not doing the deal until, until she tells me what she did wrong to me. I point blank let her know that. Well, I'm but, not doing this deal until you tell me what you did for the last four weeks. Why didn't you sell to us five weeks ago? Tell us what you did behind our back. Well, I signed up with a wholesaler and they told me that they could give me $200,000 in cash. And Sean's like, I told you, Mia, that you weren't going to be able to get that money. They aren't going to be able to perform. It just it mathematically doesn't make sense because here's what happens, Peter. Mm -hmm. I just did last night a meetup, my monthly meetup, and it was about private money. And here's one thing that I, I tell a lot of my students is if you're going to borrow money, you cannot make a mistake. You cannot, cannot take all the anxiousness away. You cannot make a mistake because if the money guy 
doesn't feel like it's valuable enough, he won't or she won't give you the money. Mm -hmm. So you can offer whatever you want to your seller. You can sign contracts, which if you sign the right contract, the purchase and sales contract, you put in there, there's a finance contingency. And if you can't get the financing, you back out. So what are you afraid of? Mm. If the bank or the hard money lender or the private money lender or your grandmother doesn't feel like it's a good deal, you're not getting the dough. Nope. End of story. <laughs> so what are you worried about making a mistake paying too much for? Why are you overanalyzing it? Right? Yep. Doesn't make sense. All right. Because the mo because those motivated sellers will allow you to be an amateur, make mistakes, even look stupid and still do the deal, absolutely no better way to practice and hone in your skills to have bet to, to get better and better at doing deals. Okay? Sure. So all this has been good and it was nice chatting with you, Peter. <laughs> see, see you next and time. <laughs> And I'm very happy that we've done this, but I'm going to do something that it took me three days to convince myself to do. Okay. Yes. And the reason why is because my, one of my coaching clients said something to me that, that, that bothered me hmm. a lot. Hmm. He said, I, I could just listen to your podcast and get enough coaching from you. Because the, the podcasts are like coaching calls, mm. which is not true because there's not two way interaction. There's not me, you know, studying deals. It's not exactly true, but I got his point. I'm giving away too much material here. So we're ending the podcast now? I should, <laughs> but I'm not going to. So what I want to do now is I want to I want to get into creating a checklist of how you would do this today. How do you find a list of people? that would be willing to do creative real estate deals with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And by all means, this should be a workshop. For example, I want to, I want to just say this right now. This is exactly what I would do on the deal hunting monthly mastery call, except I give you all the materials. I put it in a portal in a one page portal. You get the recording. So, so on the first Wednesday of the month, the deal hunting monthly mastery call, on a Zoom call, I go through and do it in front of you so you see it. Then, then I take that recording and I put it onto a, uh, a membership portal along with all the documents, checklists, and everything that goes along with how you're supposed to do that. And I give you access to that for 30 days so you can go create that campaign yourself. Mm. Okay, I charge $97 for that. It's way too cheap. I give away way too much information. And I, and I have people that actually do it and go get deals the next day or the next week, I should say, because it just works. Yeah. Okay. So this is something along the lines of what I would do in the deal hunting monthly mastery call. It's a little bit, it's not as, as uh, detailed as I would get into on that call because I don't, I don't have a zoom call in front of you, you know, cause it's a podcast. Mm -hmm. But this is a good idea of what you would get in that service. Okay. Yeah. So number one, find a realtor and tell them that you're studying real estate investing and you would like to do business with them once you start getting deals. So you're going to start building your team. Mm -hmm. Okay. So tell them that, you know, even if it's one or two or three realtors, you just don't lie to them. Just say that, you know, once you start doing deals and you need a realtor, you'd like to be able to use them. Are they interested? Some realtors don't like to deal with investors. So make sure they're willing to do that. Okay. Yep. Once you distinguish that and they say they're willing to help you, here's what you do. Number two, ask, which by the way, this list is 20 steps long. Okay. So to ask them to give you an Excel file with all of the sales from the last 13 months on the Excel file, mm -hmm. okay? That's one full annual quarter. That's enough to do, uh, that's enough survey information to do what we need to do, okay? Is this making sense so far? Well, did you say third, how, how many months did you say? 
Uh, okay. It's supposed to be 13 weeks, not 13 months. I said Okay, yes, yeah, so that's the one. So, yeah, a quarter. Yeah, thank you. Okay, yeah. the last quarter. Got it. I'm sorry about that. It's supposed to be 13 <laughs> weeks, not months. Let me change that here. You know, I read that like three times and knew something was wrong with it, and I couldn't, they didn't see it. Mm -hmm. Blind spot. I had a blind spot. All right, number three. Once you have the Excel file with all the addresses on it, okay, yeah. you upload it to Google Maps. Okay. And in the software, you ask it to pin all the addresses. So you know how when you look at Google Maps, there's that little bubble that's the pin. You know what I'm talking about? Well, it, little... well yeah. Well, it'd be, it would show, like, if, if, if you're putting, like, pins on a map, yeah. like a little spot for every sale. Right. A little red dot. This so would be, like, so the number dots. So it's going to put a dot or a, what well, they call it a pin yeah. for each address that you've uploaded. Yeah, like the pin head, the little round part shows. Right. Yeah. Right. Does that make sense? Sure. So and you'd have a bunch of pins showing where all the houses sold, right? Right. So that brings us to number four. This will give you the hyperactivity in your farm area. Okay. Or an idea that that farm area is, is worth working in or not. Mm. So like, you know, maybe on the east side of town is where the most activity is. Right. A lot of house right? sales. Or, or next to the mall or, you know, where all the condos are is where the most sales are. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you're going to have 13 weeks worth of sales, right? Yeah. And you're going to be able to pin them. So now you know where the hyperactivity is. Because it's there, there's like blotches of pins. Yeah. Right? That, Makes sense? That's where the fish are biting, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. So step number five, now pick an arbitrary address. Just pick, you know, any old address in the middle or in the center of that clump of pin deals sold. Just, just go smack dab in the middle, click on one of the pins and get that address. Which brings us to number six. Mm -hmm. Write down the address, the full address. Then we move on to number seven. Now hop over to www.melissadata.com. M-I-L-I-S-S-A. Melissadata.com. Okay? Yep. You with me so far? I'm not confusing anybody, am I? No, there's, these are nice, easy steps. I like number six. Write down the address. Yeah. I can do that one real good. Good. Step eight, once you're on the Melissa Data page, uh, look for the link that says marketing lists and data bases. It's a box on the right side. You obviously click on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number nine, step number nine. On this page, you'll use the G, G, uh, geograph, G, yeah, it's, what, geographical? No, graphy, they said. Geography. Geography? I don't know why they... Maybe, yeah, maybe that's what it is, yeah. Sorry, geography. Duh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is, Peter. Thank you. <laughs> Geo means rocks. Graphy means yeah. right. They're writing on the rocks so you can see where things are. <laughs> really? Yeah. For, for real? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like geology, so, you know, rocks. Okay. Right. So it's like when you write a map. I had no idea that that meant. I looked it up once, twice. So on this page, use the geography button on the left. Once you click on that button in the middle of the screen, another screen is going to open up. You're going to use the address and radius radius link. Mm -hmm. Okay. So once you click on the geography link or button on the left, it'll open up on the right the address and radius button in the middle of the page. Okay. Step number 10, there you put the address you wrote down in step number six, you type it in for the address. Also choose the radius that you're willing to drive to, to do deals. Mm. 
then click the add button in the box. Now I'm going to tell you that if you type in 25 miles, it's going to cost you like $3,000 for a list. Oh, there's going to be a ton of names, yeah. a ton of addresses, because you're going to yeah. get all the houses. Yeah, you're going to get a lot of addresses. You're going to be surprised at how many names you're going to get. Well, okay. Yeah, sure. So I, I tend to do, you know, like, uh, well, let me just keep going because uh, it, it'll explain itself. But just, just be careful with that section. I would do five miles to start. Mm -hmm. Okay. Step number 11. Then go back to the left menu. Okay, on the left side. And click on the absentee forward slash owner type absentee owner type okay then once you do that in the middle of the screen it's going to say absentee owner occupied in the center of the screen so there's two screens there's two boxes one on the left and one in the middle mm -hmm. so first you're going to open the one that says absentee owner on the left that'll open the screen in the middle and you choose in that middle screen the absentee owner occupied button okay you know what's the conf it's a little confusing because when i think absentee owner i know somebody owns a piece of property but he doesn't live in there the second one though absentee owner occupied i'm not sure what that means now okay so what does owner occupied mean well it means they live in the house okay but if it's absentee owner, it's like he doesn't live in the house that he lives in. I, that's why I'm being confused. Sounds like he doesn't live, but he does. Absentee and occupied seem like opposite. I'm missing something. Right. So it's both. You can choose once you're in that screen, you can choose from the absentee section or the owner occupied section. Oh, I got it. Okay. I thought it was a say, you know, okay. okay, that makes more sense because you can't be yeah, both. So, <laughs> so it, brings, it brings us to number 12. Then choose the absentee owner in the drop down menu. Okay. Okay. Then step number 13. Now I choose underneath that. So absentee owner, there's, there's four selections you can make. And they are in county, in state, out of county, out of state owners. Mm. So they're all absentee owners. So they're going to be, are they in the same county absentee owner? Are they in state absentee owners? Are they out of county absentee owners? Or are they out of state absentee owners? Right. Okay. Then on the bottom right hand side, you're going to click add filter. Okay. Now somebody's going to go through, you're going to think this is a lot, but if you listen to this podcast and just write these steps down, I'm not doing that work for you. I'm not giving you a checklist. You know, you come to the Deal Hunting Monthly Mastery, I'll do all that for you. Mm -hmm. But for today, I'm just, I'm just proving a point. This is what you would do to find deals. Okay? And that's especially, the right deal. that's especially important right now because uh, it's hard to find properties. Like, you, yeah. you might be listening to this a year from now, two years. Right now, it's rough to find properties. Yeah. Selling is easy. Buying is not so hard. So this is important so you can find more. So once you add the filter in step 13, you're going to go to step 14. When I did my address, I found, so I put my address in and I put my, I put a couple of radiuses in there. So when I did my address where I, where I live here, okay, I did a five mile radius. It pulled up 4,110 names. Hmm. Okay. So, so you get what I'm saying there, Peter. Hmm. They're absentee owners that live in a different location. They either live in county, in state, or out of county, out of state. In other right. words, the tax bill is not going to that property. So would it be accurate to say they're landlords? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Mm -hmm. All I know is they don't live in the house. Yeah. So what are the chances of me talking to them about taking monthly payments and paying them off later that they're not already doing that? Probably about 100%. I don't have to convince them. They're already motivated, just like I was talking about. They're already doing it. Mm -hmm. I'm already in, the, in their mind, in the conversation in their head already. Yep. The difference is, is, is that I'm going to cash them out in a year or two or three or four or five or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right? And they're not going to have the landlord obligation. See, I'm going after the list that is most valuable 
to the offer that I want to get that thinks that my offer will have the most value. Mm -hmm. There's nothing but upside for them because they're already collecting payments, more than likely. Yeah. Right? And if they're not, they might really like your phone call because they're paying and not inflowing, right. not getting any right. money. If it's not, you know, if it's vacant or, oh, I got a deadbeat kid living in it that pays me, I want to get rid of them. <laughs> Sell you the house and you throw them out. Exactly. So the five mile radius that I pulled had 4,110 names that cost $328. Wow, not bad. Okay. Or you could pull a two and a half, I pulled a two and a half mile radius list and uh, I didn't write down how many names it had. Oh, son of a bitch. It cost $127. So probably it was, about a third of that then, roughly? It was like 1800 if I remember right. Something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So, do you think you can buy leads? Do mm. um, you think you could buy a house with all those leads? And yeah. you spend $328, do you think? Now, now... Step number 15, because i got to keep going, because otherwise I'm going to get ahead of myself. And we're, we're kind of ahead schedule on this podcast, which I was surprised to see, but that's because I'm just sticking to the script. So step number 15 is now here's the complete magic of doing this. This is completely magical, which is why I don't normally talk about this kind of stuff on a free podcast, because who else is giving you these steps or these tips or these ideas? Bill, I've heard you talk about Melissa Data a number of times. This is the first time I've heard all the details in it. I'm glad I know where to find the podcast to write these down if I want to use this or have, you know, I got a kid right. looking for a house having a hard time, so maybe we'll go. I'm surprised you had all that details. So I'll go back and, and uh, try this out. It's and a I'm lot not of done detail. Yet. Yeah, I know. I'm not done but yet. But just, 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 getting, just getting the specifics, like all the little, uh, you know, yeah. uh, uh, menus and with the, with, the, with the follow down, I've never heard you right. give that detail. So watch this. Melissa Data, this is the magic. This is amazing. Mm -hmm. Melissa <laughs> Data will give you for that, for that $127 or $325, whatever the number is, here's what they will give you. Mm -hmm. They'll give you the property owner's name. They'll give you the property address the mailing address for the property mm -hmm. and the property owner's phone number the phone number for mm. eight cents a lead eight cents a lead and i got eight cents man eight cents a lead i'm going to tell you right now we're doing this which we're going to change because i'm going to talk to sean about it this afternoon and i got some other ideas that i'm not going to talk about with our software, mm -hmm. we're going to actually hook up, hook the two pieces of software together for eight cents a lead. But I'm going to tell you right now, I pay $97 a month for PropStream to get 10,000 names downloaded. Mm -hmm. So Sean goes in there and downloads these lists. And then it costs me 15 or 20 cents to go skip trace them to get all their information. Oh, yeah, because PropStream might not have their phone number, huh? Right. So let's yeah. just say PropStream does 10,000 downloads, right? You divide that by 97. That means that we're paying a uh, dollar three per lead. No, it can't Let be me do that no, right. No, no. So 97 divided by 10,000. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. So we're paying nine cents per lead. That makes sense. Is that right? It's zero zero nine seven. No, we're paying one cent a lead. Yeah, I think that's so right. So we're paying we're we're paying about one cent a lead. Yeah. To download them, right? Mm-hmm. Then we're paying 15 cents and sometimes 20 cents. So we're paying between 16 and 21 cents a lead. That's to find the right. phone numbers with the skip, right. which is funny because in the old days you have to hire a private detective. You'd have to drive out to Tulsa, Oklahoma. It'd be $97, right? And you think, oh, 15 right. cents. I'm doing really good. Then you find this. Was, is this something that Melissa Data didn't used to do before? Or is this, was it, it always it's there? It's something new. Freaking Sean is listening to podcasts. <laughs> 
So Sean said 16 cents a lead. He would know. He pays the bill. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Sean. <laughs> Melissa Data will give this to us for 8 cents a lead. Andrew, hey, what's, what's the big deal saving 8 cents? But if you're doing a thousand, then a ten thousand and five thousand, well, why why not? She hands it to you. You you, you can avoid a whole step, and you ha you pay less. Like duh, easier and cheaper. Come on. All right. So I can't end there, Peter. No, there's about seven steps left. So step sixteen. Okay. Now let's take it one step forward. And I really shouldn't do this, but here you go. Sean says, hey, Pete, yeah. <laughs> I've been accused of, like I said, making these podcasts like coaching calls and wanted to pull back a little bit, but because really our listeners should uh, pay for this kind of content, I'm struggling with this in my own mind. They're going to love it. Of course, they're going to love it because they're getting coaching stuff for free. Yeah. Anyways. Here goes, step number 17. Here goes. Go grab this free software called Text Magic. Download it on any device you have. It's Text Magic. T E X T M A G I C. Text Magic. Here, You'll pay $3.99 for a phone number, $3.99 for a phone number, and then about, I think Sean tells me it's like four or five cents. I thought it was a half a cent, but I think I was reading it wrong. I think it's like four or five cents a text. Yeah, and the three ninety nine yeah. is just to have your phone number to use. It's not to pay for their phone numbers that you're paying for. Just you have a number with them, four bucks. Right, so you're not texting with your cell phone number. You have your own private number that you'll be using on Twilio. Now that you have uh, it downloaded, the text magic downloaded, and you're ready to go, upload this Melissa Data list that was given to you that you bought from Miss Melissa Data to Text Magic. Hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. So imagine having 4,110 names uploaded to Text Magic, ready to go. Then start texting. Don't make a mistake and text a whole bunch of people because you won't be able to handle it. Text like 25 or 30 people each day. Mm -hmm. Just pick 25 or 30 people each day. Mm -hmm. And as you get better, you can do more, but just text 25 or 30 people. What I have found is that if you text less people and have more, be more interested in them, mm -hmm. not interesting, but more interested in them, and have better conversations with them, your conversion rate will much be much better. When we yeah. when we text 100 or 200 or 300 names, I think we lose between the cracks. We lose deals. Yeah. Because we're not really paying attention to them. Okay. No. You know, so, you, there's there's a balance in all this, and I, I we've talked about it a couple times. You know, you can do a lot of digital, you can do a lot of automation, and you should. But how do you how do you go from there? to really finding what somebody needs, but you're, which is your whole point, without that real right. personal connection. So you can't overdo it. Well, you know, we're yep. doing some kind of quantity, but that quality is really important to connect with somebody. This yep. isn't McDonald's after all, you know? Yeah. So both ways work. Both schools of thought work. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm suggesting in the beginning, you, don't need, you only need one deal. You don't need three deals a month. In the beginning, just get used to it. So here, step number 20, here's what you're going to text. Hi, I'm texting because I'm interested in buying the property over at X, X being the address. Which, yeah. by the way, if you upload your spreadsheet correctly with the property address and the XL Street labeled correctly, you can actually use a little, uh, uh, what do they call it? A little, uh, I don't know what they call it, but uh, you can insert the person's address. Hmm off of the Excel spreadsheet. So it would be something like, hi, I'm texting because I'm interested in buying the property over at 123 Main Street. Is it for sale? Well, it'll even right. insert the address. Wow, well, nice. So I want to make something very clear here because I will get support tickets on this. So I'm going to talk about this in a minute, but uh, I want to make it clear at this point. 
there's a difference between what we're doing right now and the FISBO script because people will get confused about which script to use. So mm. realize each list or each type of person we're talking to has the beginning script change because you want to get their attention. So right. like, like the for sale by owner script that's on the free website, the free stuff website, mm -hmm. right? is for calling for sale by owners. It talks about, do you want to do a terms deal? It does it that way because they're get used to getting pummeled with realtors calling them trying to get it listed. So yeah. we're asking them to do a terms deal because they're like, what is that? It knocks them off of their automaticity in their head thinking that a realtor is calling them trying to get another listing. Right. So it makes us stand out. It's a unique selling proposition. It makes us stand out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here, because we're calling off market houses, they're not they're not for sale yet. Right. Or or they they most of them because really think about it with the pandemic, <clears throat> there's pent up there's pent up sales. So there's people that have not listed the house because they don't want the pandemic in their house or they're afraid or you know whatever their their situation may be, they didn't list the house but they really do want to sell it. So now you're sneaking right through the mailbox, right into the front door, standing in the foyer saying to them, hey, do you want to sell this house? Yeah, but you're asking, is it for sale? Because it's not a FISBO, so you don't assume it is. That'd be stupid. So it's more accurate. So you're saying, hi, I'm texting you because I'm interested in buying the property over at you know, X, 123 Main Street. Mm -hmm. Is it for sale? Then once they say yes, you text them, could I rent it for a year or two without landlord obligations? and then sell it to me. That wouldn't work for you, would it? Mm -hmm. I love that. Wait a minute, say that last one. I love that. So so the second thing is, so if they say yes, you know, it is for sale, because mm. they're going to be like, what's your offer, or how much, or, you know, because they, they think they're cocky because they got people, other people trying to text them, and other people asking them. The common thing I hear is, I got five people a day asking me to sell this property. Okay. And just don't take offense to that. And remember what I said in the beginning of the podcast, that's antagonism. That's pure yeah. antagonism. Yeah. They're being antagonistic to you. Don't be antagonistic back. Right. You know, so stay, stay cheerful and you'll, and you'll just, just don't let it stick to you. They, they don't mean it. It's just, that's the way some people are. Yeah. Right. So then once you, once you send them the first one, you say, could I rent it for you? Uh, I'll give that to you again. Could I rent it from you for a year or two without the landlord obligations in parentheses, without landlord obligations, and then sell it to me? That wouldn't work for you, would it? <laughs> it's a double negative, but it works. <clears throat> or you could do something like, would you be willing to sell the house on a terms purchase? One, either one works. Okay. Mm -hmm. By the way, all these scripts you can get by clicking on the link on the podcast description. You remember I said in the description there's a link with 25 things in there? Mm -hmm. The only thing you're not going to get is the first question, which is I'm texting yeah. because I'm interested in buying a property over at X. Is it for sale? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're not going to get that. But all the other scripts are there. So just go into the description where you, wherever you're watching this podcast or listening to this podcast and click on the free stuff page and download the for sale by owner script, right? And here's what you can do is you can pre-enter that script into text magic. Mm -hmm. So every time somebody, so what you're going to do is in text magic, you're going to send out a broad text. We'll say 30, 50, 20 people, a hundred people, whatever you decide to do. And it's going to send all those texts out at once, but they're sending them out individually. It's not a broad cast, a broad text. Mm -hmm. It is sending them out all at once. But when they come back, they answer you one at a time. So you have individual conversations with each of these people when they text you back. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and it, it's all, it's all uh, you and them talking. It's very private. Okay. So if you're having trouble with setting up text magic and, and, and I, and I, I, I can't refuse to do this, but it's annoying for me. So I hope it doesn't happen too much, but, uh, but I will do it. I, I'm, I'm going to promise it. So you don't, so you don't worry about it. So if you're having trouble setting up text magic, send me a support ticket and I'll send you an ebook on how to set it up step-by-step -step with pictures that Emma made for my students. Oh, that's nice. 
Okay, so if you're having trouble, I mean, they have videos and stuff on there, but if you if you want a, a direct link to do that, then I can send you any, uh, you know, send me a support ticket and I will send you this, the, the ebook. Yep. Now, I would like to mention that all that is cool as hell. It really is. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I just told you is not something you would never mind get it for free, but most guys that charge for information don't even know how to do this. Matter of fact, Sean is on the call and I guarantee you I'm going to have to have, well, we're going to have a conversation about this because we're going to be together later on today, but I have some other ideas for him that I'd like to implement right away that for eight cents a lead, it's freaking unbelievable for off market properties. And by the way, Melissa data does a whole lot more than owner absentee. They do foreclosures. They do vacants. They do, they got a whole array of other types of deals. So it doesn't have to be just this one kind. Mm -hmm. What I'm telling you is, is if you're going to make offers where you want to do a lease option, or if you want to do, you know, a rent to own, or if you want to do a slot deal to start with, why not go to where the people are already had that, had that conversation in their head about collecting monthly rent and go talk to those people and have less barriers mm -hmm. or restrictions, right? And more important, let me go back to the beginning of my notes. When you start following these main concepts, which are, let me read it to you again. Uh, let me see here. Uh, success depends upon the value the seller places upon what you can do for them, right? Mm -hmm. So the rule that's missed by a lot of investors is find out what people want, then help them get it. So we're gonna we know what people want because they're on the list. They're on the on the owner occupy. I mean, uh, absentee owner list. They're already moved. They've already moved out of the house. What you're gonna find is a lot of accidental landlords. In other words, they bought another house. They went to sell this house. You know, a year or two or three ago, whenever. And for some reason, they couldn't sell it, so they rented it out, so they didn't have the expense. They couldn't handle the new house and the old house, so they rented it out, and it's just been kind of that way. Yeah, You're going to run into a lot of those. So, so is this valuable to them when you start saying, well, I'll rent it? You have no landlord obligations. Right now, they have landlord obligations. Mm -hmm. And when I get through a certain period, I'm going to get my buyer qualified for a mortgage, and we're going to actually get you off of this puppy. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be like, Really? So now, now you have a better chance of making deals because you're speaking to the right crowd. You know what I mean? Sure. This is kind of like, you, you know what Ruth, uh, Chris Ruth's restaurant is? Most people do. It's a very expensive steak restaurant. Mm -hmm. It's a la carte. You know, you go in and it's for two people. Yeah. It's 100, 150 bucks to eat. Yeah. Right? <laughs> this, is like, this is like me being in the parking lot of Chris Ruth's trying to sell hamburgs mm. or sell McDonald's or Burger King. Mm-hmm. Why, why would I? Why would I want to do that? They're already full. They just had a hundred fifty dollar meal. Why would they want to buy a hamburg? Yeah, even if they're going in, they don't want a hamburg. They're there for a fat steak, and you're just hamburg. Never mind. Right, right. You see what I'm saying? Not. So it's, it's the the message doesn't match the crowd. Mm-hmm. Right. Where where if I took those same hamburgs, right, and I went to and I and I'm just talking. I hope I don't get in trouble with this, but like if I go to Ethiopia where there's children that are starving to death because mm. they don't have food and I, and I try to either sell those hamburgers or get rid of those hamburgers there, what's the difference? I'm going to have no trouble in Ethiopia or wherever, mm -hmm. right, getting rid of those hamburgers, mm -hmm. right, because there's a high need for them. Yeah. So what I'm telling you is, is the only way that you can make money is put yourself in a position to make money. So how do you put yourself in a position to make money? Well, put yourself in front of the most possible best prospect you can find and then do your stuff. Mm. So all I'm saying is, is the true talent and it's showing up now. It's more magnifying now more than ever in my 20 years because the market is so hot that that you can't just willy-nilly go uh, look for leads and just accidentally find them anymore, right? So what is that story, Peter? I, I don't, I, I'm not sure that I can do this story any justice, but it's the guy that's, that's, you know, in the early 1900s, he's digging for gold. 
Oh. And he spends his life savings on all this equipment yeah. and all this machinery. And he's digging, digging, digging. He goes a year or two and he runs out of money. Yep. And he goes into town and he goes into the local bar and he finds the wealthy, you know, this wealthy guy that buys everything. And he sells them all the equipment for 25 cents and a dollar. Yep. Right. So what does the wealthy guy do? He doesn't even go out to the site. He doesn't even look at the equipment. He doesn't even care. He goes and finds some some engineer or gold specialist, I don't even know what you would call them, to do studies on the gold veins under the ground. He does studies because he's an engineer. He knows how to do that kind of stuff. So he hires this guy. He spends all the money on this guy. And then he comes up there and he says, put the machine right there and dig. How, it, and it happened and it happened to be like eight feet or three it was, feet it was away. It was ridiculously close away from where the other guy was digging and they drilled down and they hit a gold vein and he became more wealthy. Yeah. The point is the first guy was just moving his equipment around and taking haphazard shots at let's dig here, let's dig there, let's dig here. They didn't do their research. Where the where the wealthy guy, which is probably why he's wealthy, did his research and 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 put the drill where the 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 vein is most likely to be. Yep. Right. Yeah. This this is this is in my head the picture I get with investors. Are they just moving their equipment around and just drilling, looking for the gold haphazardly because they think this is where it should be? Or are they going back into history looking for those people that actually like have had experience with what we want to do? Like, for example, out of area owners that are. <clears throat> they have bought another house because they moved out. Mm -hmm. They have some experience that the likelihood of them being an accidental landlord or the likelihood of them uh, collecting rent is very high. So they're already, that trigger point has already been, it's already went off in their mind because they've, you don't have to convince them to collect rent. They're already doing it. Yep. So the value or the benefit you're going to bring to them is, well, I'll tell you what, you're collecting rent right now and you've got landlord obligations and, and there's no payday for you. How about if I give you a full asking value and I rent it from you with no with no with no uh, rental obligations? Which, by the way, all those rental obligations that you're making with your seller get passed on to your buyer. Mm -hmm. So you don't even have the mm -hmm. rental. You don't have those landlord obligations either. You're putting them on to the end user. Mm -hmm. He has to cut the grass and shovel the driveway and make the payments and 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 all that stuff. So you're just passing it on. So why not? hire the engineer to find the gold vein and mm -hmm. put the machine above it and dig and, and you'll have a better success. Yep. Right. So that's what I've showed you how to do today is, is how to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you go to flipping houses for rookies dot com uh, right on the main page, there's a pretty blonde with a fistful of money. And to the left of that, there's a course. Uh, on the front page called Creative Real Estate Dealmaking 101. Okay. So in that course, you'll learn how to make offers. The seven deal strategies that I use. So, so if you want to just in a weekend, hatch yourself up, you can do it in a weekend. And then go pull this list and just start talking to people. Right. So if you go listen to episode number... <clears throat> Uh, 242, Why Rookies Grow or Die with Finding and Making Deals, Real Estate Deals. That's a great podcast, right? Uh, you can also listen to episode 244. Those would give you enough. You can listen to episode 205 and 206. Those four or five episodes and that free course will give you enough ammunition to make a deal. I promise. I know because well, people have support tickets. People have people though. People are doing that. People have. Right. And of course, uh, you can also click on the top right hand corner uh, of, of, you know, on the top of the page, it says courses on the top, top of the page. It says courses in the links. There's only three or four links there. And when you open up the courses page, the deal hunting monthly mastery course is there. And I suggest you go take a look at the deal hunting monthly mastery because every month, we go over stuff like this. In fact, this coming April, uh, first the first uh, Wednesday of April of 2021. If you're listening to this podcast after that, then you can uh, you can just go look at it anyways. 
uh, but I'm going to actually go through some of this stuff and I'm going to I'm going to point and click and show you how to do this instead of just explaining to you on a podcast. And I got a couple more secrets up my sleeve that I have not I've not given to you here because text magic is a manual way of doing it. Uh, once I get into Sean's ear, because Sean is a, a real, real good tech guy, and I explain to him what I want to do, I'm sure he'll be all over it, and we'll be like, we'll be doing it automatically. So we have software that can do this automated. <laughs> Wait, so, you mean so, the, the automation is automated? As well? So what I'm talking, what I'm talking about is going into Melissa Data, extracting that information, putting it in my software, and automatically texting them with no human interference jeez so the only thing we have is one of our vas that works an hour and a half a day just answer those texts Mm -hmm. okay for eight cents a lead it's incredible And and an unlimited source of leads right all we have to do is change the states like right now we're doing hartford hartford connecticut and new haven connecticut and we're also doing akron ohio Mm mm-hmm but Sean in the background has to do a bunch of manual labor. I, I figured out how he doesn't have to do that anymore. We could do it all automated. I've taken all that manual labor out. And I'm going to show that on the monthly mastery, the deal hunting monthly mastery. So uh, I'm not trying to provoke you to go there. I'm just saying that that's where I teach all that stuff if you want to know more. Okay. So today's game in real estate, if you haven't figured this out, today's game in real estate, meaning... Right now, March of 2021, like you said before, Peter, you might be listening to this a year later and it might be different, but March of 2021, you you, you can't listen to those that are saying, every time I bid on a house, I get outbid and people are paying 20 grand over asking price. I mean, you're selling your family house right now and and you just got done telling me you were thinking it was 260 or 270. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. I walked through the house and I said to you, no way, Peter, you're doing two ninety nine nine, and mm-hmm. you're going to get more than that. Mm-hmm. And you just signed a contract for three thirty. That's right. right. So that's that's the market right now. It was really worth three hundred. Right. Yeah. Not well, the two sixty number was like last year, you know, or the last few years when I was anticipating this. Then I was around right. two ninety with my broker yeah. and we were still thinking you go two ninety nine. I go, absolutely. Because I, I just seen my son's looking and I just hear what's going on. It's just yeah. Not so here's here's the point in that conversation. Mm. That is very true for on market property. Yeah. Because here's what does happen. I'm gonna be very blunt here. I'm not pulling no punches today because I'm just in that mood. Okay. I've got way too much stuff going on and I'm not looking to like hype things up today. I'm just looking to like lay it on the table. Mm-hmm. So here here's the truth of the matter. People that are out there looking for deals don't know what they're doing. They haven't been trained. They're looking for on-market houses, Mm -hmm. and they're competing with one another, making it harder for everybody else to buy houses. Yeah. What I'm saying is, as you get involved with, whether it's me or somebody else, right, I'm telling you for not very much money, I'm going to teach you how to, and you don't even have to do that. This podcast alone, you could do it for free. I'm teaching you how to go find off-market property. Mm. It's a big difference between those. So in today's market, right now, to find deals, you want to be in the off-market arena. You have to go places you would not normally go, and you have to go find deals that you normally wouldn't look in those corners of the world to get. Mm -hmm. And proof of that is that Sean and I are, are like doing a lot of deals. You know, we want to do more, obviously, but the, these are not deals. These are monster deals. These are phenomenal deals. The times right now are fantastic because you make the most amount of money in chaos, and God knows there's been plenty of chaos. Yep. So what we've done is we've not only figured out that we got to get out of the, uh, uh, you know, on-market properties, you know, finding for sale by owners and MLS and realtors and all that stuff, Those are the guys that are suffering because they don't know how to. They don't have the magic of how to find the off-market deals. You know, this is much along the line, Peter, of a a realtor having a pocket listing. Yeah. Right. So what a pocket listing means is is the realtor will come to the seller and the seller will say, here's what I want to do. Sign a listing contract 
the realtor back in the day would open up his suit jacket and in the front of his lapel put the contract on the inside of his suit jacket mm -hmm. and what he would do is before he told anybody else about this deal he would go to his friend and say hey i got this really good deal you should look at it right yeah. so then the mls came along and what happened was is they would tell their friends about the deal before they put it on the mls they would actually tell the owner that they had this offer. The owner would accept the offer verbally or with a contract. And then the, the owner, the, uh, the, the agent, I have to sneeze, hang on. <coughs> oh my goodness. Then the agent would list the property as a sold property. So they would list it and then just put on there under contract. Mm -hmm. That's called a pocket listing. Yeah, I was talking right. to my broker yesterday on, on my house, and uh, she has a wholesaler feeding her, and it yeah. goes right to her flipper. <laughs> She's got a guy. It's just, you know, yeah. and I'm thinking, can I get in the middle of that some way? Yeah. I know her. She didn't even offer to me. I'll have to go back, circle back on that one, because I know her. Right. You know, I've known her for years uh, for sale I'm doing with her, but you know, it's all set up, the wholesaler to her, yeah. and it's like, and it's, it's they, nothing can move. If they don't sell to each other, it doesn't happen. So yep. it's that's that tight when you when you really get in on somebody's inside pocket and you're not on anybody's pocket listing most likely right now. That's right. So that's where this off market speaking to the seller directly and and just doing what I'm talking about, picking the list that is already predetermined as being the potential motivated seller mm. in today's market. You know, so you do 60% of your work is done by picking the right list, which I showed you how to do today. Yeah. Right? I'm not talking about vacant properties. I'm not talking, those people are not motivated. Vacant properties. Think about this. How many people have told me they're going to chase vacant properties? Why on God's green earth would you do that? Mm. Most of those people inherited them. We had a girl here in town that had eight properties that her parents gave her. They were vacant for 10 years and they got foreclosed on because of taxes. So you're saying that the people with the vacant property are not that motivated, even though they're vacant? I haven't found them that way. Yeah. I'd be interested in one because my, my kid needs a place to live. That's, that's a reason. You know, if you're looking for one for yourself to live in and right. they're not that motivated, that's not, that's not encouraging. Well, think of it. If it's vacant, it's either they're, they, like I said before, they put their head in the sand and they're not paying attention to it and they don't really care because there's no repercussion to them. Or they're, 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 they have enough resources that they could pay for the property and just let it sit there. And, mm. and most of the time, they're inherited properties, and, they're, and they're, here's what they're doing. You ready for these words? Yeah. You ready for this? Yeah. It's a, it's a life continuum Ugh. of mom and dad. So they're continuing mom and dad's life on through the house. And they can't, not they can't let go. They can't let right. go. Right. Yeah, well, I'm in the middle of that one. I know what that feels like, but it, and I'm a big boy. So I'm, on some, for some people, that's not easy. Right. Yeah, I get it. Okay. So I'm not saying that there aren't good deals with vacant houses. I'm just yeah. saying it's not as good as it seems to be in the beginning. Yeah, you would think, oh, my God, please take my vacant house because it costs me money every month. Okay. All right. So in this market, deals that buyers are fighting over and in, in causing arc auction type bidding, uh, oh, yeah, which which in turn gets sellers five, ten, twenty grand or more over the asking price. That's not the game, yeah, right. Which is why I created the deal hunting monthly mastery. I did that. I started that in September of two thousand twenty. I don't know how long it's going to last, but it's 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 apropos for now because finding deals is the uh, is the hardest thing to do in today's economy. Well, it always right? is cuz when you get when you're new in this business, you don't know how to do it. I had a friend call me, "Oh, I want to get into real estate. I'll call my broker." No, no, never no. So, it's just more important right now cuz things are so tight, but I mean, you just keep digging deeper to find faster, better ways to get stuff and I'm mm -hmm. going to say it again. You you've always gotten deals, but in the in a worse market, you got more deals going. I I know your numbers. Yeah. yeah. Well, Sean has a lot to do with that. Sean, partnering up with Sean was, was a big yep. advantage for him mm -hmm. and for me. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, what Sean did for me is, and he, he probably doesn't know this because I'm going to tell him right now because he's listening. The biggest thing he did is what you did for me back in the day. You got me back to working. Mm -hmm. 
So Sean got me back to working because now I feel obligated to him. Like I, I would, I would personally, I would not do a slot deal. I mean, who, why would I want to work for five thousand mm. dollars? I mean, I'm not being cocky or nothing like that. But now, if a slot deal came, I would do it because I know Sean would do a majority of the work, and I would just do it just because for Sean. I wouldn't want to jip him out of the five thousand. Yeah, because that's the way I am. I'm very loyal to my partnership. Mm -hmm. Right. So I would just do that, and you know that because we've been partners for sure. years, and you've known me for twenty years, sure. and. You know, so so John, Sean just took me to another level of work. And there's there's days where I don't want to do the work. And it's not because I'm lazy and I don't want to do the work. It's because my online business or I got some other thing going on or, you know, I got this going on or I got I got a lot of stuff. I've got I've got nine sources of income in my life. Nine sources of income. So it doesn't take much to, to steal my attention, mm -hmm. you know, have one thing or the other steal my attention. So John writes, my daughter's looking, I just put it in there, my, mm -hmm. my daughter's looking for a house too. This is great intro to asking to buy a house and it doesn't look so scammy. Mm -hmm. Yes, John, that is correct. Hey, John, just put in the, uh, I'm just curious where you are. Just, just tell me, tell us where, where you are, like what city state, just curious. So uh, hopefully this information was helpful today. I know that, uh, you know, I've been trying to hone in on the, the podcast and not have all the chit chat so that we're just right down to doing business. Uh, although I love chit chatting with you, Peter, but uh, you could buy me steak and cigars and shit and dinner to chit chat with me from now on. OK, <laughs> well, we've been doing that. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> Speaking of, we should talk about Saturday night. <laughs> Saturday night. Yeah, well, that's right. Well, we might have another check in our pocket. Uh, I'm not. I don't care if we got the check or not. There's plenty of money in the checkbook. So oh no, just give, I'm, it's just an excuse to take. I'm thinking. I'm thinking we should go for the five hundred dollar meal. I don't know where that is, but we should go for that. Well, look listen, at them cringe, folks. My look, grandmother. Look, look, my look, grandmother. Look. My grandmother told me not to show off because the poor people feel bad. He told them not to yeah. show off. I'm poor. Huh? I'm poor. <laughs> I am. Oh, you are. Well, I, I, was, I was I was worrying about our poor broker because uh, you know she just shifted offices and she lost some sales and things are a little bit tight. So I thought maybe we take her out to to dinner because she might be hungry. Oh, that's a good idea. No, honestly, folks, just hold on for a sec. She uh, she's I talked to her the other night. Uh, she didn't even know our closing was happening tomorrow because so she's a little bit out of the loop. She's between two. Uh, she's switching uh, brokerages, but. Um, uh, yeah, she said she wanted to like maybe work with us in your mentorship program or some flips or whatever we need. She just, I think she just likes hanging around us because she tells us how crazy all the other sellers and buyers are. And we're actually, believe it or not, less crazy than them. Yeah. <laughs> maybe we're just a little nicer or something. But anyway, she wants to hang a little bit. So cool. Maybe. So John yeah. says he's in the North Metro Atlanta area called Canton, Georgia. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I bet the whole country's about in the same kind of boat. Not much difference. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. one, one area of the country's uh, things are going up, one area's going down. I bet the whole country's in the same boat right now. It is. Uh, all at once. It's something we never see. The whole thing all at once. It is. It's very rare. It makes me wonder if the whole thing's going to go down at the same time. It is. But, you know, I don't know them crazy aristocrats at the top of the top of the food chain just put 1.9 billion dollars into the economy so i have no idea how that's going to play out other than i know there's no way you can print 1.9 billion dollars put it in the economy and have trillion. production as low as trillion. it is i'm sorry trillion i keep saying billion trillion gazillion yeah, yeah. there's no way you could put all that money because inflation means n not enough product too much money yeah not enough loaves of bread and too much money to buy the loaves of bread. So they're going to overpay. That's what it means. Yeah. So here we are just coming off of COVID with a whole year of people staying at home and not making products or making less products. I mean, I told you I tried to buy a couch. Well, I bought a couch for my wife. Mm. She wanted a new couch set, right? Yeah. It took us four months and, and it turned into five months just to get it delivered because they had they, there was nobody making couches. Yeah. Right? So... So that's the that's the recipe for disaster right there. That's the 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 tax nobody talks about is inflation. So so they put in whatever trillions. I mean, uh, President Trump put in a bunch of money. 
there's still a, a whole bunch of money, something there's like billions, 900. There's billions left from before. 900 billion that they hadn't spent from the last relief package. And then they just did. So they got almost $3 trillion that they're going to pump into the economy. And, and and the only thing I know about it, I don't know enough about it because I haven't been watching because I don't want to hear about it because I've just got my head in the sand about it because uh, it's just so insane to me. Mm-hmm. The only thing I could say about it is is that that one senator, a Republican senator, was on uh, uh, one of the stations I was watching late at night. Uh, and uh, when I went to bed, I was, I'd was come home from the smoke shop, and it was like 11 o'clock at night. I turned TV on for 20 minutes, and I watched this senator say this. First of all, he said that they're passing bills at 4 o'clock in the morning and 2 o'clock in the morning because they don't want the public to know the bills they're passing, number one. And number two, he, he's like talking about... I lost my train of thought. He's talking about how he, it was the guy that made them read the bill. Right. And it took him 11 hours to read the read bill. Read the damn thing. There's hundreds of pages. I'm, I'm surprised they can get through 11 hours to read it. I'm surprised they can get through it in 11 hours. Right. So here's what he said. is too many times I heard that in 2024, 2025, 2026, he said this is an emergency relief package. Why are they talking about 2024, 25, and 26? The money should be gone by then. Why? why it's a relief package for the Americans. And what are they saying about 2024, 5, 6? What are they saying about it? The money, some of this money is going to get released then? then. Yeah, so he's like, why, why are we, where's this money going that it's going to last? You know what I mean? It's like, this is supposed to be relief for the Americans now. The, the emergency is now. It's not in 2024. Yeah, so but Bill, he, they, his point his point is is that there's a lot of things in the package that has nothing to do with emergency. I heard I read in the Epic Times the other day that only nine percent of that money is being used for COVID. Oh yeah, All, most of it is like some horrible states and cities that just did a crappy job yeah. running their economy. There's gonna be here here's some money because you did a crappy job. Is that how you raise your kids? Hey, you did a crappy job. You didn't go to work. You lost your job. Here's a bunch of money. How about they get reward, a job? Re, Rewarding they the, reward the they reward the down stats. So, anyways, yeah. so I don't know what's going to happen. All I know is is this little niche that I'm talking about, where you, off market value of properties. You go look for those. You do exactly what we're talking about in today's podcast and the last couple podcasts we've been talking about, and you will find deals. You will make money, and you will find those motivated sellers because they are out there. They are they are there. Don't let anybody tell you any different. And if if you're not finding them, then you are doing something wrong. You need to do something like get on this podcast or, or get on my monthly mastery or go find someone that could teach it to you. It doesn't have to be me. And and figure out who's doing a lot of deals right now and take advice from them. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's my ending parting words, Peter. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, everybody, for listening and all the support you give us, all the support tickets. Uh, all the nice comments. There's not a single support ticket. I can't even remember ever seeing a single support ticket that somebody doesn't start off with. Bill and Pete, we love the amount of content you give us. Thank you for doing all the hard work and giving us what we have to get us going. I mean, they're they're all, I'm not, I'm just kind of paraphrasing, but they all start off that way. They start off with, thank you for all the, all the, the, the materials you give us for free. You know, not even just for free, but the materials you give us so that we have a chance of getting going. So almost every support ticket starts that way. So uh, I feel happy about that. I feel like we are doing our job. We are changing the industry, and I want to continue to do that. So thank you for all the support. Make sure you go to FlippingHousesForRookies.com and do a testimonial for us if you if you feel like we're doing a good job. If you're not, if we're not doing a good job, leave us a testimonial anyway so that we could go uh, fix it. Okay. But uh, just a big fat thank you from everybody. And uh, we're over and out. Chat with you next week. Love you being here. Thanks for tuning in to the hottest real estate topics on the planet with Bill and Pete. If you want to continue learning how to buy and sell real estate without money or credit, head over to FlippingHouses.club for some cutting-edge real estate wealth tools. Or contact us at info at FlippingHouses.club.